الحمد للہ الضلع یا بلوغ مدحت القاعلون ولا یحسین عما اہ العدون ولا یعدی حق المجتحدون الزی لیسا لصفت ہی حد المحدود ولا نعت موجود ولا وقت معدود ولا اجل ممدود فطر الخلاء کا بے قدرت و نشر ریاح بے رحمت و وطدا بے سخور میادان عرض اصلاۃ وسلام و تحیت و الکرام علی اشرف المبیا اب المرسلین حبیب الہ العالمین سیدنا و نبینا و حبیب قلوبنا و طبیب نفوسنا و شفیع ذنوبنا و مولانا ابل قاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد و علی اہل بیت طیبین طاہرین المعصومین المظلومین المنتجبین و لعنت الدائمت علی اعدائهم اجمعین من الان الى قیام یوم الدین اما بعد قال اللہ سبحانه و تعالی فی محکم کتابه وهو اصدق القائلین و قوله الحق بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم والفجر ولیال العشر والشفع والوتر ولیل ازا یسر انا ذالکا حل فی ذالکا قسم لزی حجر صدق اللہ علی العظیم صلی اللہ محمد و علی محمد The month of Zul Hijjah is the 12th and the last month of the Islamic calendar. The month is from the sacred months. Al-Ashhur al-Hurum, the four sacred months. This month has very important events. And one of the event which is the most important is Hajj. That's why the month is called Zul Hijjah. That is the month of Hajj. The month in which Hajj is performed. This shows how important is Hajj, one of the pillars of Islam. And uh, according to the Rawayat of Ahlul Bayt Musalam, Hajj is for to give power and uh, to firm the deen. Hajj is made first obligatory to make the deen, the religion strong, to make it stronger. That's why Hajj is made obligatory. One of the events of Hajj is called Arafah. This is on the 9th of Zul Hijjah. Today is 9th of Zul Hijjah. Arafah is one of the most important Articles of Hajj, that is Wukuf fil Arafah, to stop at Arafah and to do uh, some ibadat in this uh, day and, and the place. The day is called Yom al Arafah and the place where we stop and make a and, uh, halt is called Maidan e Arafah. <coughs> If a person is not able to do uh, to stop at Arafah to make a halt, halt there, then the Hajj is incomplete. In order that the Hajj should be complete, you have to do Wakuf fil Arafat. Today, Alhamdulillah, the day of Arafah uh, has passed, and you know how to do Amal in this day. And Alhamdulillah, most of us. We did the amal for this day. Fasting is one of the amal for the day of Arafah. Then there is dua of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, a very beautiful dua. That dua should be recited. And then there are uh, other amal, ziyarat of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. So this day is very important day of Islamic calendar. And Alhamdulillah, Allah the Almighty gave us this strength and tawfiq that we were able uh, to do our amal on this day of Arafah. And maybe if we are lucky, Allah 
uh, the Almighty will give me and you tawfiq to go for Hajj and spend this day of Arafah uh, on the plains of Arafat uh, during Hajj, inshallah, next year. But as you know that the, what we are going through, uh, the, the virus, even this year Hajj was not performed uh, internationally. 60,000 people did Hajj this year. And most of them were the local people, those who were the residents of uh, that area and that country. The Hajj, which is two million, three million people. But now from last year and this year, th these are in thousands. From million, it is thousands. This is the uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plans and, uh, and we hope that whatever Allah has uh, written for us, for uh, they, there will be khair for all of us in this. Coming to the verses of the Quran which I recited in the beginning of the khutbah from Surah Wal Fajr, which is chapter number 89 of the Holy Quran. This is a Makkan Surah, and there are 30 ayat in it. The first ayah says, Wal Fajr, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, take oath. He takes oath. And uh, he said, by the daybreak, by the dawn, wal fajr. This is called qasam. Wal in ashr. And, and Allah takes the oath of the ten nights. By the daybreak, by the ten nights. Wal shaf'i wal water. By the even and the odd. Maybe namaz e shuf'a, which is even to raka. And namaz e witr which is one rak'ah, bitter means one. Allah says, by the even and the odd, or by the namaz e shuf'a and namaz e water, and walayli is a yasr, <coughs> and the night when it passes. And then Allah says, hal fi, hal fi zalika kasamun lizi hijr? Is it not oath? that uh, is it not oath which Allah has taken for, for those people who have sense, who has perception. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes about the people who were transgressors like the people of Ad, the people of Samud, Pharaoh and others. So Mufassirin says that the ten nights about which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Wal uh, that is the by the ten nights are the first ten nights of the month of Dhul Hijjah. This is one tafsir. <coughs> Another tafsir, tafsir says that these are the last ten nights of the holy month of Ramadan, in which there is Laylatul Qadr. One of the nights is Laylatul Qadr. And some of the Mufassirin says maybe here these ten nights refers to the first. Ten nights of the holy month of Muharram, which is again from the sacred months and the first month of the Islamic calendar coming after the Hajj. <coughs> well, whatever it is, these ten nights are important nights according to the Quran and according to the hadith of the Masumin salam. The first ten nights of Zul Hijjah. Tomorrow is the tenth of Zul Hijjah. Tonight is the tenth night. That is the day of Eid, the day of sacrifice. So what we do is, we sacrifice an animal uh, for the sake of Allah, to seek nearness to Allah. This is highly recommended that one should sacrifice an animal. And those who are, those who are there for Hajj, for them it is obligatory to sacrifice an animal. For us, those who are not attending Hajj, it is highly recommended. But the Urafa, those ulama scholars who talks about Irfan, they say that when you sacrifice an animal, you also try to sacrifice your lowly desires, your carnal desires and wishes. By sacrificing an animal, also try to sacrifice the love of the world for which we do everything, we go after it. Hubbu dunya rasu kulli khatiya. Love of the world is the root of every evil. World is not something which is bad, but just to do everything in order to 
again the worldly things that is bad to go after it and uh, just leave uh, the hereafter leave the reason for which we are created and just world world and world then it is not good this is hubb uh, dunya which is raso kulle khatiya so when you sacrifice an animal you should also sacrifice your carnal desires hawai nafs the you should sacrifice all those bad habits and all those diseases which are spiritual diseases like jealousy uh riba arrogance greed so when you are sacrificing also sacrifice all those things which are hindrance between reaching to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is what is the advice of the hukama the, the the scholars of irfan and those who are urfa sallu ala muhammad wa ali muhammad allahumma salli ala muhammad ninth of the hijjah is also the day on which hazrat muslim ibn aqil alayhi salam was martyred and he was safir and ambassador of imam husain alayhi salam so today we are gathered here to commemorate his shahada and to learn some lessons from his life muslim ibn aqil alayhi salam was a very high personality he his personality was very high muslim ibn aqil was an alim that is he was a learned person he was a sincere person he was brave person and he was very intelligent intelligent in the sense that he knew that who is the imam of my time and what are what are my responsibility towards the imam of my time we learn a lot of lessons from uh, hazrat muslim ibn aqil alayhi salam some of them i will mention but before that i would like to in order to understand the personality of muslim ibn aqil we also need to know about the revolution of imam husain alayhi salam and about why imam husain alayhi salam gave this big sacrifice the sacrifice of himself his children his companions and the sacrifice of the ladies of ahlul bayt al musallam being taken as captives sabaya so we need to know that and alhamdulillah we know about it i just want to mention few points about this revolution and this might be introduction to the coming month which is the month of muharram in which we remember imam husain alayhi salam as an introduction my dear brothers respected sister just ponder on one point and that is we go for hajj every year all the muslims go from different parts of the world they go and they perform hajj if you ask someone why you go for hajj and what do you do there while you are there in hajj well the answer is that we go for hajj to remember the sacrifice of ibrahim alayhi salam his son ismail alayhi salam and his wife bibi hajar hajj is the remembrance of hazrat ibrahim alayhi salam ibrahim khalilullah the champion of monotheism <coughs> a big monotheist muwahhid was ibrahim alayhi salam So uh, we go and we do tawaf in memory of Ibrahim alayhi salam we do sa'i in memory of Hazrat Hajar alayhi salam we pelt stones pebbles towards jamarat towards the satan that pillars which resemble the satan called jamarat in memory of Ibrahim alayhi salam and we also sacrifice an animal at mina to remember ibrahim alayhi salam sacrifice when he was ready to sacrifice his son ismail 
But that sacrifice was changed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an animal, a sheep, goat, from heavens. That animal was not from the world. It was not born from uh, another animal. No. That was a special animal which was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the heavens in place of Ismail alayhi salam. That animal was sacrificed. Ismail alayhi salam was saved. <coughs> In memory of that, we do sacrifice, we, we uh, cut the throat and slaughter animal. Now this is the question of when the people ask us, why you remember Muharram? Why you do Majalis? Why you make the Husseiniya and the mosque, you decorate it with the black uh, clothes, curtains? And why you cry and why you we for Imam Hussain why there are majalis, why there is matam? The answer is to remember Karbala, to remember the sacrifice of Imam Hussain If the people will not go for Hajj, the, the, then the world will forget the sacrifice of Ibrahim and Ismail. If we will not do Muharram, the people will forget the sacrifice of Imam Hussain Tomorrow no one will be able to say who is the killer and who was the one who was killed. Who was tyrant, who was uh, unjust and the one who was innocent. Because we have a very bad history. And that history tells us that on the day of Ghadir, in the front of more than 100,000 Ashab, some say 120,000, more than 100,000 100, Ashab, the Holy Prophet said, Man kuntu mawla fahaza aliyun mawla, and that was in the daylight, in front of so many companions, in front of so many Muslims. And later on, after passing a few years, the people forget that event. And when they were asked, is such thing happened? They said, no, we don't remember. They forget the event which was performed in the daylight. So they will also forget Karbala, Zalim and Mazloom. There will be no difference between it. That's why we do Muharram. That's why we wear black clothes, clothes and we do Majalis so that the people should not forget Karbala as they forget Ghadir. And this is not something new. Why? Because the Muslims are doing this from thousands of years. Ibrahim salam sacrificed his son and there were other events which took place in the life of Ibrahim salam after passing of 4,000 years. The Muslims do that every year. They go and they do all those, those articles, manasik, which were performed by Ibrahim salam. We do that so that the people should remember Ibrahim and his son Ismail. This is the answer to the question why we cry, why we weep, why we do majalises in Muharram. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. <coughs> now coming to the sacrifice of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. And then I will relate it to the personality of Muslim ibn Aqil. Imam Hussain alayhi salam clearly said in his khutbah why he is leaving Medina. And what is the purpose of his revolution, his Qiyam, Qiyam Imam Hussain alayhi salam. What is the purpose of Ashura? So in that famous khutbah, which you have heard many times, in which Imam Hussain alayhi salam says clearly, Inni lam akhruj ashram wala batra, wala mufsidun wala zalima, bal innama kharajtu li talab al-islah fi ummat jaddi. Oh Hussein, why you are leaving Medina? He says, I am leaving Medina not to spread corruption or to do zulum or to have government and power, the worldly power. No. I am not going for spreading corruption. I am not going to do injustice injustice to anyone but I am leaving Medina in order to do Islah reform 
I, I want to reform the religion of my grandfather. I want to reform Islam. Because the people were taking Islam, they on the other track. The real track on which Islam should be. Now some of the people, they, they converted that into personal things. And they took it as, they, they, this is uh, the kingdom. And for the personal desires, they were using Islam. While Islam should not be used for the um, personal desires. So Imam al says, now is the time to do reform to the religion of my grandfather. That is the religion Sharia brought by the Holy Prophet. So someone asked, Ya Abu Abdullah, then why you are taking the ladies with you? Imam Sallallahu says, maybe this is the will of Allah that he sees, he, he wants to see that the Ahlul Bayt should suffer. And when I take my Ahlul Bayt with me, as, and later on they will become captives, they will tell the people what was the mission of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. They will propagate the mission of me, me Hussein. In Allah Sha'a an Yarahunna Sabaya. This was the answer which Imam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave. Why you are going? In Allah Sha'a an Yarani Katila. Maybe Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala wants me to sacrifice my life. So that the religion is saved, reform is made, and the religion of the Holy Prophet should remain on the, uh, on the real track and as it was revealed by my grandfather without any changes. And the captives, my holy ladies of Alul Bayt, my family members, when they will be captives, they will preach to the people what Ashura was. And what was Qiyam of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. So let's see the timeline. Imam Hussain alayhi salam left Medina on 28th of Rajab year 60 after Hijrah. 28. So we remember and commemorate this day as Yawm Gham. Every 28th Rajab we commemorate as Rawangi Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Rawangi from where? From Medina to Makkah. Imam al salam reached Mecca on 3rd Shaban, 60 after Hijrah. That is 5 days. After 5 days, Imam al salam reached Mecca. In Mecca, Imam al salam lived for 4 months and 4 days. That is, from 3rd September, sorry, from the 3rd Shaban, 60 after Hijrah, up till the 8th of Zul Hijjah, 60 after Hijrah. Which was yesterday. Eid Zul Hijjah is Yomu Tarwiyah. Why it is called Yomu Tarwiyah? Tarwiyah means to gather water. Uh, many years ago, there, there, there was no water there because that is a barren land. This is only, there it is only desert and no water. So the Hujaj. Before starting the Manasik Hajj, which starts from 9, they will gather water on the 8th. So that they, they, they will use the water for drinking, for performing wudu, and for other things. So this day is Yom Tarwiyah, and that is the day on which Imam Hussain left Makkah. And all the people were coming to perform Hajj. Imam Hussain uh, changed his ihram from ihram of Umrah and did Umrah and then he left the sanctity and the uh, Holy Kaaba. This was the Imam Hussain alayhi salam timings. So what Imam Hussain alayhi salam did in this four months and four days in, in, in Mecca? Well, the history says Imam Hussain alayhi salam delivered khutbahs, he met many people. Where he was living? He was living in the house of Bibi Khadija sallallahu alayha, which was the house of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Imam Hussain alayhi salam lived there. He was not in the houses 
like uh, someone's guest or he made a tent outside and just living there. No. The house of Bibi Khadija Salamullah was in Mecca. Imam Hussain lived there four months and four days. And during this time, Imam Hussain uh, he was in contact with the people and he delivered so many khutbas. And even one day Imam Hussain asked Abbas salam, to go on the top of the Kaaba, on the roof of the Kaaba and give khutbah. That was also during this time. People are doing tawaf, a lot of people. And Hazrat Abbas salam, went on the top of the Kaaba and he gave khutbah there. Imam Hussain was also there at the courtyard of Kaaba. Where Hazrat Abbas salam, said we're very famous, this is a very beautiful khutbah and you, you should read the khutbah of Abbas salam, where he says Alhamdulillah Allazi sharafa uh, Allazi sharafa Kaaba or Allazi sharafa bayt be kadume abi All praise to be Allah that he gave this Kaaba sharaf that is honor Allah gave this Kaaba honor that my grandfather, sorry, my father Ali ibn Abi Talib was born inside the Kaaba. And oh people, what do you think who Hussein is? Let me tell you who is Hussein. The best thing is that to tell the people who Hussein is. And when the people will know who is Hussein, then they will understand what they are going to do and what they did. And what they should do if they know who is Hussain. And Abbas alayhi salam says who is Hussain, who Hussain is. He says that if Hussain just sign, make a sign towards Kaaba, the Kaaba will fly towards Hussain. Kaaba is a house, house of Allah, a very uh, place which has sanctity, a respected place. But what about Hussein? Who Hussein is? Hussein is the son of the savior of Kaaba. So the people should know about the personality of Hussein. And in that khutbah, Hazrat Abbas salam, spoke that this is in detail. So in this time when Imam Hussein salam, was there, the people of Kufa sent letters to Imam Hussein salam. One after another, one letter comes in which Imam Hussain was invited uh, and the, the content of the letter was, this is from the Shias of Kufa to Hussain ibn Ali. O oh, Hussain, you are the son of Ali, we are Shias of Ali, we are Shias of your father. We are friends and followers of your father. Please come to us, we don't have an Imam. We need you to be in, in Kufa. Kufa is the city of your father. We will help you. We will stand beside you. And we are not going to pay allegiance to Yazid. Yazid is a person who is... Uh, we don't want to pay allegiance to him. He is not... A person who is not cap capable of being a Khalifa. You are the son of Ali. You are the Imam. Come to us. Not one letter, not two, hundreds of letters. During the time when Imam Hussain was in Mecca, now Imam Hussain decided to send his amb ambassador to the people of Kufa. And for this, Imam Hussain selected his brother, his brother in law, his cousin, Muslim Ibn Aqil. And he wrote a letter to the people of Kufa in which he said who, who Muslim is. He says Muslim is Mu'tamidi. I have, uh, I, re, uh, uh, I rely on him. He's a reliable person. Mu'tamidi means a reliable person. Muslim is a reliable person. He's trustworthy. He's a learned person. He is my brother. He's from my Ahlul Bayt. I and he has same blood. He's not an ordinary person. I'm sending him to you. 
you should pay allegiance to me on his hands. And if everything is okay and Muslim tells me that Kufa is, uh, is okay to come and lead you as an Imam, you need an Imam, I will come to you and lead you in the world and in the hereafter. Now some of the narration says that Muslim took his two children with him. This is also in the books of history. His two children were also with Muslim Ibn Aqil. So Muslim was a brave person. Muslim was a very sincere person. He was a very intelligent person. He left Mecca for Kufa. He reached Kufa and he stayed with some of the Shias like Hani ibn Urwa was one of the leaders of Shia. So he stayed at his house. And when the people, when they learned that Muslim has come, who is cousin of Imam Hussain and who is son of Aqil, they started paying allegiance bayat for Imam Hussain alayhi salam on the hands of Muslim ibn Aqil. Some of the narration says 18,000 people in Kufa, they paid allegiance to Imam Hussain alayhi salam. So Muslim Ibn Aqil, he wrote a letter to Imam Hussain and he said, Ya Abu Abdullah, situation in Kufa is very good. The people, uh, they want you to come and lead them as an Imam. They don't have an Imam. So you come to Kufa uh, uh, and then uh, the people has paid allegiance to you on my hands and he sent this letter to Imam Hussain alayhi On the other hand, the governor of Kufa, he was a lenient person or he was a person who was not that uh, brave. He uh, wrote the situation to Yazid and Yazid sent Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad to Kufa to go and take care of Kufa, control the situation. Now Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, he put a mask, he covered his face and he entered into Kufa. Now the people of Kufa, they thought that Imam Hussain has come because he, he, he has covered and he did that so that to know how many Shias are in Kufa and who are those who paid allegiance and bad to Imam Hussain alayhi salam. So this was his trick. He was a very cunning person. Later on when the people saw that he is Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, they were disappointed to see, oh, we were waiting for Imam Hussain alayhi salam. But Muslim knew that Imam Hussain alayhi salam cannot come unless and until Imam Hussain alayhi salam informs him. Without information, Imam Hussain alayhi salam will not come. But the other people, who were just simple people of Kufa, they thought that this is Imam Hussain alayhi salam. And with this trick, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad took and he understood, uh, he understood the situation of Kufa. How is the situation of Kufa? When Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad came, he ordered that who will, if I see anyone helping Muslim, I'm going to kill him. Not only him, his whole family will be killed. So the people became scared when they heard Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad how he is saying this. <coughs> Hani ibn Urwa was martyred by Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad for helping Muslim. The situation completely changed and the time came that all those people who did allegiance and bayat for Imam Hussain on the hands of Kufa, they became scared, frightened, and they took their allegiance and they left Muslim Ibn Aqil alone in Kufa. Now, Muslim has no friends in Kufa. He has no uh, supporters in Kufa. Allahu Akbar. The Muslimiyat of Muslim Ibn Aqil is so much that the place where he is, uh, he, he, he is new. He, he, he was guest of the people of Kufa and then there is no one to, to help him and support him. So the Rewayat says that Muslim Ibn Aqil was leading prayers in the mosque of Kufa. 
There were only few people. Others were all in their houses. They were afraid of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. And when Hazrat Muslim ibn Aqil alayhi salam turned back after he finished the uh, salat, there was only one person in the mosque. These are the masaib of Hazrat Muslim ibn Aqil. Ajani Grami Ketan Kaja Muslim ibn Aqil ni namaz khatam ki or abne salam pera to masjid mesaref ek admi regiatha jo Hazrat Muslim alayhi salam ke saath tha aur jab hazrat muslim masjid se nikle to koi bhi nahi tha ab hazrat muslim kufa ki galiyon mein yak o tanha hain akele hain na kisi ko jante hain na koi rishtedar hai na koi apna ghar hai bas hazrat muslim akele hi galiyon mein kufa ki galiyon mein chal rahe hain aise main dekha ki ek khatoon hai jo ghar ke bahar baithi hai اپنے بیٹے کا انتظار کر رہی ہے حضرت مسلم نے اسے پانی مانگا وہ خاتون اندر گئی اس نے پانی پلایا تاریخ میں اس خاتون کا نام توعا لکھا ہے جب بھی امام حسین کا ذکر ہوتا ہے حضرت مسلم کا ذکر ہوتا ہے اس مومنہ کا ذکر بھی ضرور ہوتا ہے توعا نے حضرت مسلم کو پانی پلایا حضرت مسلم نے جب پانی پیا تو اندر گئی برتن رکھنے کے لیے جب واپس باہر آئی تو دیکھا مسلم اسی طرح وہاں بیٹھے ہوئے ہیں تو کہتی ہے کہ اے مسافر تم کون ہو تمہارا گھر نہیں ہے کوفا کے حالات اچھے نہیں ہیں اپنے گھر چلے جاؤ بس یہ سننا تھا ایک مرتبہ حضرت مسلم نے کہا کہ میں غریب ہوں میرا گھر نہیں ہے میں اس شہر میں اس شہر کوفا میں یک و تنہا ہوں میں آپ کون ہیں آپ کا نام کیا ہے کا انا مسلم ابن عقیل میرا نام مسلم ہے میں عقیل کا بیٹا ہوں میرے ساتھ کوفا کے لوگوں نے دغا کیا دھوکہ کیا بس یہ سننا تھا وہ مومنہ تھی اس نے حضرت مسلم کو گھر کے اندر بلایا حضرت مسلم کی خدمت کی مگر ایسے میں اس کا بیٹا آتا ہے اس کا شوہر آتا ہے وہ جب دیکھتے ہیں کہ مسلم ان کے گھر پہ ہے تو فوراً ہی حاکم کو خبر کر دیتے ہیں حاکم لشکر بیچتا ہے محمد ابن اش اس جیسا ملعون لشکر لے کر آتا ہے تاکہ حضرت مسلم ابن عقیل کو گرفتار کرے جناب مسلم ابن عقیل نے تلوار اٹھائی گھر سے باہر نکل آئے تو کہتی ہے کہ سیدی و مولائی اے میرے مولا اے میرے سید آپ گھر کے اندر زیادہ محفوظ ہیں کہاں نہیں ہم اہل البیت کسی کا احسان نہیں رکھتے بس حضرت مسلم ابن عقیل گھر سے باہر آئے وہاں دوسری طرف سے ظالموں نے لشکر میں حملہ کیا حضرت مسلم علیہ السلام بہادری کے ساتھ لڑ رہے ہیں حضرت مسلم ایک عام آدمی نہیں تھے بہادری کے ساتھ لڑ رہے ہیں ظالموں نے جب دیکھا کہ مسلم کو اس طرح کی رفتار نہیں کر سکتے تو انہوں نے ایک چال چلی وہیں ایک گڑا کھودا اور حضرت مسلم کو لڑائی کے دوران اس گڑے تک لے کر آئے حضرت مسلم اس گھڑے میں گر جاتے ہیں جیسے ہی حضرت مسلم گھڑے میں گر گئے سارے لشکر نے حضرت مسلم پر حملہ کر دیا جو جس کے ہاتھ میں تھا جو چیز جو بھی تھی ہاتھ میں حضرت مسلم کو مارنے شروع کر دی حضرت مسلم کا ہونٹ مبارک پھٹ جاتا ہے خون نکلنا شروع ہو جاتا ہے حضرت مسلم کو گرفتار کر کے عبید اللہ ابن زیاد کے پاس دربار میں لایا جاتا ہے حضرت مسلم زخمی ہیں ہاتھوں میں ہتکڑیاں ہیں ظالم کے سامنے شیر کی طرح کھڑے ہیں کسی نے کہا اے مسلم تم نے امیر کو سلام نہیں کیا تم نے عبید اللہ ابن زیاد کو سلام نہیں کیا حضرت مسلم کہتے ہیں مالی الامیر سول حسین علیہ السلام میرا میرا صرف ایک ہی امیر ہے اور وہ حسین ہے حسین کے علاوہ میرا اور کوئی امیر نہیں ہے بس عزیزان گرامی پوری شہادت نہیں پڑھنی اشارہ کرنا ہے ایک حاکم کہتا ہے عبید اللہ نے زیاد کہتا ہے مسلم اگر کوئی وسیعت ہے تو کرو حضرت مسلم فرماتے ہیں مجھے پانی پلایا جائے ایک پیالہ پانی کا لایا گیا 
حضرت مسلم نے جیسے ہی پانی پینا چاہا تو آپ کے ہونٹ مبارک سے جو خون بہ رہا تھا وہ پیالے میں گر جاتا ہے حضرت مسلم پیالہ واپس کرتے ہیں دوسرا پیالہ لایا جاتا حضرت مسلم پھر پینے کی کوشش کرتے ہیں مگر دہانے مبارک سے خون پیالے میں گر جاتا ہے بس فرماتے ہیں کہ شاید میری قسمت میں دنیا سے پیاسا جانا ہی لکھا ہوا ہے پھر فرماتے ہیں میری دوسری وسیعت یہ ہے کہ میں مکروز ہوں سات سو درہم مجھ پر قرض ہے ہو سکے تو میرا ذرا بیچ کے میرا قرض ادا کر دیا جائے تیسری وسیعت کسی کو بھیج کے حسین علیہ السلام کے پاس اور اس کو یہ کہہ دیا جائے کہ اے حسین کوفہ مت آنا کوفیوں نے دغا کی ہے کوفی جو ہے انہوں نے وفا نہیں دکھائی امام حسین کو یہ میسج پیغام دے دینا اجرکم اللہ بس عزیزان گرامی حضرت مسلم کے ہاتھ باندھ دیے جاتے ہیں دار المارہ کی چت پر لے جایا جاتا ہے وہاں حضرت مسلم کو دار المارہ کی چت سے نیچے گرایا جاتا ہے مگر اس سے پہلے سر مبارک کو تن سے جدا کر دیتے ہیں بدر مبارک کو دار المارہ کی چت سے نیچے گرایا جاتا ہے یہ نوزل ہجا کا واقعہ ہے دوسری طرف امام حسین علیہ السلام ایک دن پہلے مکہ سے نکل کر کوفہ کی طرف آ رہے ہیں اب راستے میں ان کو خبر مل جاتی ہے کہ حضرت مسلم ابن اکیل شہید ہو گئے بس امام حسین نے حضرت مسلم کی بیٹی کو بلایا تاریخ میں نام حمیدہ خاتون ہے حضرت حمیدہ خاتون کے سر پہ ہاتھ رکھا فرماتے ہیں بی بی حمیدہ آج سے مجھے اپنے والد سمجھنا بس یہ سننا تھا چھوٹی بی بی نے کہا چچا جان آپ نے میرے سر پہ ایسا ہاتھ رکھا ہے جس سے یتیموں کے سر پہ ہاتھ رکھا جاتا ہے چچا جان کیا میں یتیمہ ہو گئی ہوں امام حسین علیہ السلام نے تسلی دی بچی کے سر پہ ہاتھ رکھا بچی کو پیار کیا مگر میرا سلام ہو بی بی سکینہ پر وہ یتیمہ کہ جب وہ روتی تھی تو چہنچے مرتبہ چہ مارتا تھا وہ یتیمہ کہ جس کو پانی کے لیے رولایا گیا وہ یتیمہ کہ جس کی قبر زندان میں بنائی گئی اللہ لعنت اللہ علی القوم الظالمین وَسَيَعْلَمُ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا آلَ مُحَمَّدْ اَيَّمُنْ كَلِبٍ يَنْكَلِبُونَ لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَتَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ الْعَلِيِّ الْعَظِيمِ تمام بیماروں کی صحت و سلامتی شفایابی کیلئے پانچ مرتبہ آیا کریمہ اما یجیبو کی تلاوت بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اما یجیب المسترع اذا دعاہ و یکشف السوق 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 اَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُسْتَرَّ عِذَا دَآهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوْقِ بارالا ان آیاتِ کریمہ کا واسطہ جو مریض ہیں بیمار ہیں ان کو صحت شفائی کامل عطا فرما جو پریشان حال ہیں ان کی پریشانیوں کو دور فرما بارالا جو لوگ نیک اور شریح حاجات رکھتے ہیں ان کی حاجات کو پورا فرما بالخصوص بے حق کے حضرت مسلم ابن عقیل صفیر امام حسین علیہ السلام جو مؤمن اور مؤمنہ حاجات شریع رکھتے ہیں ان کے حاجات کو پورا فرما ہمارے مرہومین کو غریق رحمت فرما حاضرین کے مرہومین کو غریق رحمت فرما ہمارے علم ایمان اور تقوی میں اضافہ فرما حج عمرے اور زیارات کی سعادت ہم کو نصیب فرما امام زمانہ علیہ السلام کو ہم سے راضی اور خوشنود فرما امام علیہ السلام کے ظہور میں تعجیل فرما آمین یا رب العالمین وانتا سمی العلیم بحق محمد و آلہ طیبین تاہرین جملہ مومنین اور مومنات کی صالح ثواب کے لیے رحم اللہ من کرعا سورة المبارکة الفاتحة مع السلوات
Hussain al Garib al Garib al Hussain, Shahid al Shahid al Shahid al Hussain, Hussain al Salam ho tumhe ay shahe karbala Salam ho tumhe ay kartile jafa Salam ho tumhe ay shahe karbala Salam ho tumhe ay kartile jafa Salam ho tumhe din ke peshwa Shaheed al Shaheed al Shaheed al Hussain Hussain al Garib al تم ہی ہو بقائے دین خدا تم ہی ہو ہمارے امام خدا تم ہی ہو بقائے دین خدا تم ہی ہو ہمارے امام خدا تم ہی تو ہو شافی روز جزا شہید 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 الحسین کرتا کے گلا تو نے ثابت کیا بچا کے یہ دین تو نے ثابت کیا کرتا کے گلا تو نے ثابت کیا بچا کے یہ دین تو نے ثابت کیا کہ تم جانشین رسول خدا قریب الحسین القریب الحسین حسین القریب ہمیں کربولا میں بلاو حسین ہمیں اپنا روزہ دکھاو حسین ہمیں کربولا میں بلاو حسین ہمیں اپنا روزہ دکھاو حسین بنے ہم بھی آ کے زوار حسین حسین الگریب الگریب اے نور خدا اے نور مصطفیٰ اے دست جگر علی مصطفیٰ اے نور خدا اے نور مصطفیٰ اے دست جگر علی مرتضی اے وارث نوح خلیل خدا حسین الگریب الگریب الحسین اے عرض حسین کربلا کربلا اے عرض حسین نوا نی نوا اے عرض حسین کربلا کربلا اے عرض حسین نوا نی نوا اے خاک شفا کربلا کربلا حسین الگریب سلام اے گریب الوطن السلام سلام اے اسیر مہن السلام سلام اے گریب الوطن السلام سلام اے اسیر مہن السلام سلام اے امام زمان السلام حسین الگریب الگریب الحسین حسین الگریب الگریب الحسین شہید الحسین شہید الحسین کر رہی تھی لاشے مسلم پہ یہ زہرہ بکا کر رہی تھی لاشے مسلم پہ یہ زہرہ بکا کر رہی تھی لاشے مسلم پہ یہ زہرہ 
याली कूपे में फिर आई है रोने सैदा कर ही थी लाश मुस्लिम पे ये जहराब का कर रही थी लाश मुस्लिम पे ये जहराब आप पर जब इब ने मुलजम ने किया सज दे मेवार हाथ पहलू पर रखे आई थी मैं पहली बार आज फिर उस हाल में जहरा को है आना पड़ा कर रही थी लाश मुस्लिम पे ये जहराब कर ही थी लाश मुस्लिम पे ये जहर कूपे वालों ने इसे मिल कर है मारा लाश मुस्लिम है से पारा पारा जिस्म है सारा मेरे बच्चे का जख्मों से भरा कर ही थी लाश मुस्लिम पे ये जहरा बुका कर ही शे मुस्लिम पे ये जहर किस तरह मैंने संभाला किस तरह था माई से क्या बताऊं मैं खड़ी थी हाथ फैलाए हुए दारुल मारा से जब था लाश मुस्लिम गिरा कर रही थी शे मुस्लिम पे ये जहराब का कर रही थी लाश मुस्लिम पे ये जह कुछ ही दिन में मैं यहाँ पर आऊंगी रोती हुई इसके बच्चों पर चलेगी जब के हार की छुरी मैं संभालूंगी उन्हें आकर रुकैया की जगह कर रही थी लाश मुस्लिम पे ये जहराब का कर थी लाश मुस्लिम पे ये जहरा बहन थे अकबर जबान सैदा पर बस यही साथ जैनब के यहाँ पे मुझको आना है अभी शाम तक ले जाएगा कूपे से गम का सिलसिला कर रही थी लाश मुस्लिम पे ये जराब का कर रही थी लाश मुस्लिम पे ये जराब का मुतवजे ज्यारत सल्ला रसूल सल्ला अमीर अलमोमिन वया सैदिलवसीन सल्ला सैद थी वया मौला थिया फातिमत वया सैद था निसाआलमीन 
صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا أبا محمد يا إمام حسن المجتبى صلى الله عليك يا أبا عبد الله الحسين الشهيد الغريب الأتشان السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا غريب الغربا ويا معين زوفاء والفقراء ويا أيها المدفون بأرض توس سيدي كن شفيئنا وشفيء والدينا في يوم الجزاء ورحمة الله وبركاته صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا إمام يا صاحب العصر وزمان الأمان 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 من فتنة زمان السلام عليك يا شريك القرآن ويا إمام الإنس والجان عجل الله تعالى فرجك وصحل الله تعالى مخرجك وظهورك وجعلنا من أنصارك وعوانك وشيتك ومحبيك ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج سب ملكه اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعلي حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتئه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلي محمد